Portugal on the ocean. This is going to be an interesting video where we decide to leave Portugal before lockdown. We spend the last couple days to get whatever we needed, get food, get water and get out before we weren't allowed to get out and would be in the rainy season. We try to protect ourselves with our sail cover. There was a big easterly swell from a force 8 that had been at Gibraltar, meaning a northwesterly swell that came from the Atlantic, making massive cross swells basically, with peaks on it of over 4 meter. Slamming against our boat, rocking. Okay, Sharon got so seasick and had been I take my hat off for her. She kept on steering with one hand, using the bucket with another in the periods of time I had to sleep. And that went on for about 3-4 days till she was over it. We have no autopilot yet, but we lashed down the tiller and we figured out she would steer herself, sometimes for over an hour. This was a great time for us to get out of the rain, to get out of the wind, to warm up, to get some rest and eat some food together. This worked a lot better. And then when we get closer to the Canaries, we hear on the VHF that it's forbidden for any boats to go in the territorial waters of Spain. Now we have to go all the way around it, in between the Canaries and Morocco. Now there was beautiful sailing as well. Uh, moments that it was absolutely awesome to see the extended floats sliding to the water like knives and see the water splash around it. We enjoyed those moments. Also, it was getting warmer near the Canaries. Not so cold anymore. We were happy that we have gone south, away from the Algarve in the rain season, and being warm in the sun, enjoying this. It took a week for us to arrive at the Canaries. From the south side we approached it and we made a phone call when we were in phone range and talked with uh, the rescue and the authorities that we needed some water if we weren't allowed to stay because where else could we go? At least there was the Cape Verde but already it was getting clear that the Cape Verde was going to close down as well. So they allowed us after lots of hassle to go to a harbour and when we arrived at that harbour there was police, there were people in yachts screaming us that the harbour was closed. We tried to explain that we had talked to the authorities, they didn't want to listen. And screaming that they would tow us out with the police boats if we would come in the harbour and dock up. And so we decided to leave. It was a, a scary experience. Talking again then with the authorities and the rescue, we were advised to go to Las Palmas, and where we were allowed to restock our boat with water and food and fuel. Well, we were helped actually very well, but we weren't allowed to stay. The Cape Verde were closed. There was no other option than continue our plan to go to the Caribbean. But first we get a time to rest and watch a bit around in the anchorage of Las Palmas. But there's a lot of work that needs to be done. The electronics, they were not yet connected solidly in the boat at a good place where they stayed well dry. After that job was done, there was the autopilot that needed to be made. We needed an autopilot to go into the ocean. We couldn't steer almost 3000 miles without it. We had two old autopilot systems on the boat, but nothing that could fit to the steering lever that I made to steer the boat. So it was time for being creative with epoxy and carbon again, something I enjoyed to do. And a new connection was created in the steering lever to fit the autopilot unit which was also altered a little bit with carbon. Now we had an autopilot. We were ready to leave again. And uh, we motored out. Being five minutes out of the harbour there was the Spanish patrol boat from the police behind us. Asking all kind of information, we explained what we had done, we explained we had permission on email. Uh, they wanted the emails again, uh, that would have been the fourth time we would have sent them to them. They clarified to us that they were the police and not the other authorities, so they needed to have specific information from us. So we gave it all to them and then they told us, okay, you can leave, but you're not allowed to come back in Spanish water. So get out of Spanish water as soon as possible and head into the ocean. That was basically what they told us. 
You will hear in the next episode how difficult it was to find an island in the Caribbean that would respect safe haven. Thank you for watching Living on the Ocean. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you subscribe to get informed when the next episode of this story comes out.